In this concept, we're going to relate the velocities in the stationary and the rotating frames. And the following concept will relate the accelerations. And um, so the question is to try and find an equation relating the velocities in the inertial and rotating frames. Well, if r is the position, then we can just set q equal to r. So r is that position vector. Points from the origin to whatever you're looking at. And we're going to substitute that into here. So putting Q equals R. So that is the desired relationship between the velocities. Now let's be clear about what we mean. dr dt s0 is a velocity seen by an inertial observer and dr dt s is the velocity seen by the rotating observer. All right, I think now this verifying for uniform circular motion will help you get a grip on, to start to develop some intuition, not get a grip, but develop some intuition for what this equation really says. So for uniform circular motion, What does that mean? It means that an object is going in a circle of radius r with constant speed. Okay, that's what uniform circular motion is. What is um, and we're going to think about two different frames. The frame x naught, y naught. That's the um, inertial frame. And then we're going to also think about a frame x, y, where this s x axis passes through the actual position of the mass m. So as that mass rotates around the circle, that x-axis is following it, and the y-axis is always 90 degrees ahead of it. So the angular velocity vector, in this case, is in the z-hat direction. All right, let's try and apply this equation now. The, the first thing to consider is dr dt as seen by the rotating observer. So r is this vector that locates the position of the mass m, its tail of the vector r is at the origin, 
and its head is at the position of the mass. So as this mass rotates, our vector rotates with it. So when the mass gets to here, the R vector is pointing up to here, etc. But the X uh, axis is also rotating with the mass. So that R vector is always going to be pointing in the X direction as this rotates. So from the point of view of the rotating observer, this R vector isn't changing with respect to the axes, the frame of reference. So dr dt, in this example, is zero because the vector r always pointing in the x-direction. It's not changing. This rotating observer, so this would be like you on a merry-go-round, and you're sitting on the merry-go-round, and you're watching one of the bars of the merry-go-round go around, and you're just saying, okay, from my perspective as I go on this merry-go-round, this bar that comes down isn't moving. It's, it's still in my line of sight at all times. That's what that one's zero. This term, omega cross r, is going to be the vector omega, which is out of the board. And we get that simply by putting the heel of our hand at the uh, axis of rotation, which is here, and rotating our fingers in the direction of rotation, and our thumb gives the uh, direction of angular velocity, which is out of the board. So this vector, omega cross r, is going to be a vector omega that's out of the board, and r vector is in, that's in this direction. So let me let this marker represent omega, and r is that direction, I have to get the cross product. Well, omega crossed into r, put my fingers in the direction of omega, cross them into r, my thumb will give the direction of, of uh, dr dt, or of omega cross r. In fact, it's this direction right here. In fact, it's not an accident that that omega cross r points in the direction of the velocity. In fact, we're pretty much done. In fact, this equation, equation one, says that dr dt the velocity as seen by the inertial observer equals, since dr dt in the in the rotating frame is zero, just omega cross r. You might say, that's all well and good, but that doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before in my life. And to make a full believer out of you, I want to take the um, magnitude of these vectors. That'll be the magnitude of omega cross r this should just be the speed seen by 
the inertial observer. And omega cross r, to take that cross product, I'm going to take the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times what trigonometric function of the angle between the two. When you say it's a cross product, therefore it's a sine. So we need the sine of the angle between omega and r. Here's omega coming out of the board, and here's r. What's the angle between them? It's 90, and the sine of 90 is 1. So this, I'm rather hopeful that you do recognize that. Normally you'll see this is v is lowercase omega times r, uh, but it's the same thing. This is the tangential speed, um, v naught here. That's a, just the tangential speed. Let's see, where do I have room? If you want to use the notation that you've probably seen before, it's, it's a little omega times r. So that's how that comes out of this equation. This equation, however, is more general than that. It applies to more than uniform circular motion. It also applies if you're moving around on that surface. So if you're a child on a merry-go-round that's spinning and then you're moving on the surface, then you will get this term. You'll have a velocity as seen in the rotating frame by the rotating observer.